good day friends it is me hl mod tech and i'm back and today i'm going to teach you how to make your own awesome print in place fidget toys so my friends let's get cracking step one of course is to get to tinkercad and choose create new design when you're done with that we need to name our project i need you to type pip fidget and put your initials after it because when it's time to print we really need that information once you get that completed we are going to build with the cone when we build with the cone, we are just going to use the parameters. We're not going to stretch it. I want the base radius, this distance, to stay 10. I want the top radius to be 5. Make sure you press enter to see that happen. We want the height to be 10. Press enter. We want the sides to be 64 so they are super smooth. Our fidget's going to be made of a cone in the middle with a cylinder on the outside that even though it prints all at once, it will spin in the middle. We are going to put our second part right on top of the first. So choose the work plane and click right on that cone we just made. Bring out another cone and we're going to turn it into a cylinder by putting five for the base radius and five for the top radius. I like this strategy because we get to learn the radius and it's real easy to make our shapes turn out the way we want. We're going to keep the height at 20, but we're going to change the sides to 64. Put the work plane back to the ground, select both of them, choose a corner view, click a line, and we want it centered on the sides, just like that. We're going to do that process one more time, but the work plane now is going to be on top of our cute little cylinder we made. We're going to bring out a third cone. This time, the base radius is the 5, and the top radius is the 10. Press enter on both of those, change the height of the object to 10, and change the sides to 64. You could type it, I'm going to use the slider. Once again, work plane to the ground, grab all three, hit a line, and pop, pop. You have just created the center post for your awesome project. Select them all and group them, and see how that's going to be one nice piece in the middle. We're going to repeat that process again to create the part that gets cut out. Bring out another cylinder, but this time make it a hole. Change its top radius. Remember this was 5. We're going to go 6, so it's 1 millimeter further in this. We're going to repeat that process quickly to create the cutout part of our fidget. We're going to still use the cone, but this time we're going to make it a hole and we're going to make our numbers one millimeter larger in each direction. So there's six millimeters for this top distance. We're going to make the bottom radius 11. We're going to keep the height still 10. And once again, we're going to make the sides 64. We're going to use the work plane, put another one of those cones on top. And then I need to change the top radius to six the base radius to 6. I'm going to keep the height 20, but I'm going to slide the sides all the way to 64. Put the work plane back to the ground. I'm going to select them all and center them. I could wait and just do this at the end, but I like seeing people practice the centering because I do see students struggle with that sometimes. Work plane back on the top. Bring out another cone. Once again, we're going to do the top radius this time as the 11 the base radius which is touching that cylinder which was a cone it'll go back to six the height will only be 10 and last but not least we can slide the sides all the way to 64 work plane to the ground select the whole bunch align and then don't forget that has to be a hole I'm going to take those three amazing parts and I'm going to group them and I'm going to show you how the project comes together. See how that is going to cut out a gap where the other part fits in exactly right. So now we bring out a cylinder and we just need to stretch it to the exact size. The size I want you to stretch it to is 25. I like to hold shift and stretch one handle then whatever number I went to, I type the number 25 in the box, and it automatically goes to that size in every direction. 
I am going to fix the height of our project by just stretching it to crazy numbers. And then because of the math I've done building this, I know that the perfect number is 40. With all of our parts created, I'm going to move them apart for grouping. First, I'm going to take my cylinder and I'm going to make it have really rounded sides. I'm going to select those two parts by drawing a box that touches them. And when I do center, center, and group, boom, we have just made the part that fits together with our other one exactly. I'm going to take those two and do center as well. Pop, pop. And then to show you how slick this looks on the inside, I'm going to make it transparent. You can see there are gaps all the way around so that when you're done, you'll be able to hold the center and spin the outside. This one is fine and it's cool and it's pretty sweet that you just built it, but it's so much more fun when you make them more awesome. To do that, we are going to hit duplicate. We're going to bring our parts over and we're going to split them up so that they're separated. We want to always have a backup set in case we end up making something incorrectly. We are going to break apart this project and we're going to take the cylinder change the sides to 12 so we've got something flat to add cool decorations on. The first thing I'm going to do is just rotate it so that it's more aligned with the work plane. So you can see now this is in the middle. I'm going to hit that work plane and I'm going to bring out the roof. Notice this lands on that work plane that I just created. And then I'm going to shrink it to the size I'm going to choose. I'm going to make mine 4 millimeters wide. And I'm going to make it stretch the entire distance up. I'm going to use the little black handle to stretch it. Notice I'm grabbing the one in the middle and I'm stretching it all the way and I'm going to type the number 40 because I know that's how big I need it. I'm going to use the arrow keys to line it up with that place that I was bringing it out on. I'm going to set my work plane back to the ground and then if I hit align and center and I drop it to the bottom, notice that is even good. Notice it sticks out a mile though. I only want it to stick out one or two millimeters, so I'm going to type two millimeters. I do like that. I'm going to create this same part on the other side. I'm going to do that by doing control D and then I'm going to move it all the way across with the arrow keys. So notice it came to the other side of the project. I'm going to use flip to turn it around. So I'm going to hit the work plane button and put it right on that face exactly opposite the other. When I do D to drop, notice it is in line. I'm going to put the work plane back to the ground, select them all, and once again, I'm going to do that center to make sure they're lined up right across from each other. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks. I'm going to hide both those middle pieces. I'm going to grab my new cool little pieces that I'm attaching. I'm going to group them, and I am going to do Control D and because of the 12 faces, I know that rotating them 22 and a half or 45 is really slick. If you do that rotation and don't touch anything else, you can do control D again and again so that your shapes show up on all the sides. When I hit show all, you can see I've got my awesome parts. I'm going to select that entire little piece and I'm going to group it so that I have an awesome fidget spinner with grips. At this point, you are ready to combine and print, but I wanna make it just a little cooler. I wanna make sure I can tell this is mine. So I'm gonna set the work plane to the top of my purple shape or my centerpiece. I'm gonna bring out the text and I'm gonna type my initials on it so that I know it was created by me. There's my MH. I squish it and squish it with the black handle so it fits. I'm gonna make sure that it is only one millimeter thick. Turn it into a hole because aligning is so easy, I'm going to hit that center and center. And then I'm going to do control down arrow to push it in one millimeter. When I group, all of a sudden I have got a custom fidget spinner that is labeled for me. I can then select those two pieces and I can center them and center them. And that project is ready for printing. If you're in my class, you have permission to do one of these. Make sure you grab both of the pieces that you have. You can choose export STL. And then we always go to that STL folder we add and make sure it has your 
Pip, Fidget, and your initials. If you've made more than one, because there are so many ways to customize these, just make sure you name them B1, V2, V3, or whatever you've made. Alrighty, friends, so I hope you understand the concepts of how to build that. You can make so many of these customs. I added the little bump sticking on the outside. You could also make it so that it had little indents on the inside. You can cut out shapes. You could add scribble. You can add anything you want to make yours look a little more awesome. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.